I did not get all of my seeds started yesterday that I needed to, so I'm going back through today and just sowing some of the kales. I didn't get time to do it. Um, and I am growing goji berries for the first time this year. And I'm growing them because they were sent to me in the seed swap. And it was one of those things when someone sent them to me, I was like, oh, yes, I cannot wait to grow those. I buy goji berries. Uh, they're definitely not the cheapest either uh, they're known as kind of like a superfood around the world so i've got all the lovely seeds that you guys sent me in the swap um, and these were just really cool ones that stuck out to me and i really wanted to grow so i sewed some and i still needed some more so i found them uh, thank you Allie, for sending these to me they made me really excited but the greenhouse is about well it feels like 100 degrees although i know it's really not 100 degrees it feels super super warm in there um so i've actually got the door open nathan closed the automatic vent and he did that to try to trap air in there that way we don't actually have to you know if we can trap most of the air in there and not have to run the heater as much that would be really kind of ideal um, just to try to save on electricity and stuff like that. Now I've got some of my onions in the ground. I was kind of waiting in succession sowing those. I thought I was even sowing them a bit early. Uh, I was talking to some of my friends though and they said that they think I'm okay if I go ahead and plant them out. Um, we've got some rain in the forecast for the next few days. So I've got Nathan cleaning out some garden beds, uh, filling them in in some spaces just to make sure we get them in the ground. You coming June? Come on. Come in here. <laughs> you are cute. You're a cute little thing. Okay. Yeah, you think so too? Uh, you want to help mommy plant some seeds? Uh, oh, okay. Well, come on. Let's go. Yeah, so it's about 70 degrees in here. I've got the door open. Like I said, the vent's kind of shut just to trap uh, all of the heat in there that I can. These goji berries say that you're supposed to soak them. For the sake of not really having the time and wanting to just get these sewed, I'm gonna go ahead and sew them and just make sure that I water them really well. Um, so we'll see. I'm not sure if you have ever tried a goji berry. Uh, most of them are red. I did get some seeds that said they were black, so I'm assuming that's just kind of the different variety of the goji berry that you can buy. Um, they are kind of hard to explain. They're like this little berry. It's more like a dried berry. Um, it kind of tastes really earthy. Like the first note that you get is this just really deep earthy flavor. Kind of like that when you experience uh, eating a beet. But then it's kind of like covered with this really sweet aftertaste that I really like. So typically how I... I eat my goji berries is I will throw them in with smoothies that way I don't really notice anything um, or when I'm making my salads I just top it so I'll have like my spinach uh, my meat my kimchi whatever veggies I throw in there my chickpeas that's typically kind of how I do a salad and then I'll just sprinkle the top with goji berries and they actually taste uh, not bad I don't mind eating them the kids don't uh, really love eating them and so I found when I can just kind of sneak them into things they really don't mind them that bad All right, time to get the water hose out here and soak all of these seeds really, really good. I have not brought grow lights out here yet or a heat mats. I don't think I'm gonna do the heat mats. I'm gonna hold off and just kind of see. Now, when I start my peppers, you know, those really, really like the warmth. That's probably when I'll bring some in. But most of everything I've sowed has just been some herbs, uh, some kales and lettuce, and then the goji berries and stuff like that. So I'm gonna hold off and just kind of play it by ear and just see what happens. Nathan was cleaning out a bed and I sewed some stuff in there. There was a lot of extra things I had from whenever I was planting for the winter. And I guess I forgot about one of these rutabagas and he says it is huge huge so let's go take a look come on uh-oh uh-oh it's okay come on there you go have you harvested that rutabaga yet okay where is it oh my gosh <laughs> Look how big that is. Wow. 
That's huge. So Nathan's cleaning out this bed. This is the strawberries over here is where I kind of had the extra plants and he's just going to sow the rest of the onions. Uh, try to put them in here. Are you helping June? Mom, yeah. you have to give us our lunch in the trampoline because we're doing 24 hours in the trampoline. 24 hours in the trampoline? I don't think you're gonna make it. I'll fix it. Yeah. I will. <laughs> Bring your lunch and dinner in there? Yep. Okay. These kids are crazy. Huh? I know, this little surprise bed is amazing. I just sewed it and honestly totally forgot about it. I've harvested broccoli off of there uh, once, but Nathan found this really big kohlrabi too. Let me see. Look at that. June, you are such a good helper. I really wanted to show you guys my Brussels sprouts though. I'm just super, super elated. Uh, we're actually gonna be having Brussels sprouts for dinner. I think Nathan's pretty excited since I have attempted to grow Brussels sprouts for him several times. I just do much better growing these in the fall and into the winter. I just don't have a long enough spring here in my zone uh, to where they get mature and they just don't get eaten. I've actually had no insect netting on this bed for probably the last month or two and I have zero insect net, uh, damage, which is really nice. As you guys can see, they are pretty big. I have been going and taking off the, the lower leaves just to allow them to focus on building or on growing the actual Brussels. So these are the ones we're gonna harvest tonight. The plant itself just looks really good. Um, and so since it has no protection, I've been pleasantly just surprised. Look at that. Those are beautiful. I still have a few kohlrabi left to harvest. Some of them are like starting to bolt, so I probably need to go ahead and harvest those. I'm just gonna ferment these for Nathan. I've, I don't have very many of them. And then the only thing left in the bed, aside uh, from the Brussels sprouts, are these few. And then once we harvest all those, I'll just go ahead and start amending this bed and getting it ready for the spring. So that is actually one of the beds that I'm gonna be doing flowers in. So I've went ahead and bought, uh, to trellis flowers, you do need to trellis them uh, for the kind that I'm growing. It's a bit different. Uh, it's just like this mesh netting with these squares and you'll plant the flowers in each square and it kind of just holds them straight. Uh, and so I'll need to go ahead and get that amended pretty quickly just so I can figure out what to do with the trellising and the netting. I think we're gonna go ahead and lay landscape fabric down in the bed just to keep the weeds down since I'm not gonna be able to get in there um, as easily as I would you know growing tomatoes and other things like that so we have some prep work with that which I'm just trying to be mindful of go ahead and harvest the stuff as I can so I can work on those things here are some cabbages that I got on sale at the end of summer and threw them in really late but I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave them all because I'll be able to harvest these for spring um, and they're, they're doing really good actually hey mama are you eating some good food? Are you eating some good food? Coco is doing really well. Her babies are doing really well. She's just been everything we could have hoped for, honestly, for a first time mom. We did go through, uh, we gave her a few days just to kind of <laughs> not feel threatened by us. Uh, we got all of these rabbits some, from some good friends of ours, Jacob and Lacey, and he told us we needed to go through, uh, count the rabbits. If there were any stillborns, we needed to remove them. Uh, there were two stillborns, so Nathan removed them, but we still have seven healthy babies. We have been checking on them. She's totally fine um, with us, you know. Look at them, we just really remove the fur and kind of count heads. We're not holding them or touching them or anything like that. Uh, but overall, she's been really good. She's taking care of them really well. She hasn't minded Nathan and I uh, kind of having our hands in there and seeing what's going on. So she is everything we could have hoped for out of a breeder. And we will continue to keep her and breed her. And it's just been a really good experience because we've had some not so good experiences with rabbits. And I feel like we really kind of needed this one. It is a beautiful winter day i mean it literally the sun is out it's probably in the mid 50s it just feels so good i had a lot of work to do inside and whenever the winter like just gifts you with the presence of sunshine and a beautiful day i'm like i can't 
I'll postpone every inside thing I have to do and I can do it tonight or tomorrow because we've got the rain coming. But just moments like this where I can just walk around my farm and just kind of feel the warmth of the sunshine and kind of plan out for what the spring's gonna bring. It just, I love it. I love it so much. I love coming in my greenhouse and like breaking a sweat for the first time. Um, I'm trying to transition some stuff from this greenhouse to the other one mainly just my trays um, and stuff for my soil so i've got to move this little shelf um into the other one that's what i'm going to keep my soil on i'm going to attempt to try and just make some soil and play around with that for a while and see kind of uh, how that works out i had some friends tell me i uh, give me a recommendation on soil and so i'm going to buy that and just kind of do some comparisons and see but right now this greenhouse is a mess i mean i literally have stuff everywhere um, all of these though for the most part have been sanitized all of these underneath here have been sanitized so I just need to figure out really what I am needing transition that uh, to the other greenhouse and then maybe kind of have some order in here because it is it's a bit mad in here so as I'm kind of walking the farm and, and kind of visualizing and, and really working through and kind of tweaking my game plan for the spring, um, it just leaves me with a lot of anticipation. It leaves me with a lot of room to grow and learn in certain areas. Um, and I don't know, we, we share our lives really in depth with you guys. We try to be as transparent and honest as, as we can with you guys as our audience. Like we want to be relatable. We want to share with you guys the highs and the lows because life on a farm is difficult. Uh, you have to really learn how to adapt. And I think how you handle those challenges really kind of refines you as a person. You know, my pastor had shared something uh, this past week at church and, and it was really good. It was one of those things that when he had spoken, it immediately struck me. Uh, it, it began to stir me, honestly, and, and make me evaluate things. And, you know, when we live our life so transparent with you guys, uh, for the most part, you guys are amazing. <laughs> you know, you guys are awesome. Uh, you rally behind us and just love us well. But then there is that small percentage uh, that are not so nice. Uh, you know, that point out what we're doing wrong and why we shouldn't be doing it. And I would honestly be lying to you guys if I told you that those things uh, didn't hurt my heart, uh, that they didn't bother me. I'm, I'm human and, you know, hurtful things hurt. And I wish that I was superwoman and things didn't bother me, but that's just not the case. And so this week I was kind of challenged with um, just some negative things. And if I'm being completely honest, I, I didn't handle them well. I, I let them affect me and that kind of brought me back to what my pastor was saying and, and overall he was encouraging us to always extend grace that that should be our number one reaction is to love and extend grace despite the circumstances and i really pray that that shines through to you guys that that you guys view our farm and our family as a place of comfort as a place of acceptance and as a place of where there's grace and that you're always welcomed at our table. That That is truly what we want. There are gonna be people that follow us from all different walks of life with different beliefs and that's fine. Like that is what makes the world go round. We don't all have to agree with each other. We're all, you know, aiming towards a goal, whatever that goal may be, whether it's to better the earth, better ourselves as people, you know, steward the land well, grow food for our community or our family. We all have a general goal that we're aiming after. And I think that that's worth rallying around each other and supporting each other despite some of the differences. And the thing that he said that struck me was he challenged us with this question. And it was, when people think of you, do they immediately know what you stand for or do they know what you stand against? And that will hit you. <laughs> that will hit you like a ton of bricks. Uh, or at least it did for me. I sat and I pondered on that. Well, I've been pondering on it for days. I, I want... I want people to view me and my farm and know what we stand for, know that we are believers and we love Jesus Christ. And I want them to know that our place uh, and our platform is a safe place that they can come to, you know, and get encouragement and get prayer and learn growth and how to work through hardships and trials in the right way. Um, and I just really, 
I, I really hope that you guys feel that from us. I really hope that we are a platform and we've represented our platform well and that we've extended grace and love above all else. Um, and I just really, really would appreciate if you guys would, would pray for us and, and pray that when situations arise and when conflict comes that we would handle that the way we're supposed to as believers and that we wouldn't let our flesh get in the way of those things now we know everyone's not going to agree with us and that's fine i am fine with people challenging me um and asking questions if they think i'm doing it wrong because sometimes i may be doing it wrong and i just don't realize it until someone you know kind of counters that and ha ask the question like hey is this really the right thing um i think that accepting that you're wrong is fine growth happens there i think how uh you know a person portrays that you're wrong is really kind of what determines and sets the tone and then obviously how we respond as humans you know it's going to determine a lot and i always want to respond in love and grace and acceptance and really just meet people where they are uh, and so that's just been something that's been on my heart a lot lately and i really just wanted to share it with you guys because i want you guys to know what we're for i want you to know what our farm stands for what our family stands for i want you to know that we love you guys and we want to walk through life with you guys, the good and the bad. We want you guys to walk through life with us, the good and the bad. And we are always learning. We we have farmed for a few years, but we certainly don't know it all. And we always want to be in a place where we're willing to learn and adapt and grow and be challenged by things. I always love how like certain things always, there's always a relatability somewhere. You know, like if someone says something, you're like, oh, that's really good. Uh, you can most of the time always take that and kind of adapt it to your life and what's going on and anytime i'm in the greenhouse starting seeds and i just have my hands in the soil and i think about that whole process you know like i think about the having good soil i think about planting the seed and having it spring forth abundance and um, and i really just i kind of always relate to myself as a seed i want my heart to be good soil I want to amend, you know, the soil of my soul with love and kindness and goodness and the fruits of the spirits. And I want it to be good things. That way, whatever I plant in it, and if I'm planting all these things in it, I want to spring forth all those good qualities. I want to spring forth, you know, abundance and joy and encouragement. And I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm just really in a season of my life where I'm diligently uh, praying and asking for that, that God would challenge me, uh, what I'm amending the soil of my soul with and what I am putting in. That way I put out um, something good. <laughs> I want to plant good things in my garden and in my heart. Ooh, I think our collards are about ready or we could harvest some of these. These were really, really slow going. They took me, I had to replant them several times and I honestly can't remember why, but now they're actually starting to do good. And the scarlet kale, look at that. This would go really good in like a salad. And I'm surprised too, because I haven't had any of the, you know, row covers up and it's been getting kind of cold, but they're doing great. Our dino kale is finally starting to thrive. I didn't think I could ever grow this successfully, but it's looking pretty good. So one of my favorite things about living in Arkansas is yes, it does get cold and yes, it does freeze, but our winters just are not like a typical winter. So I'm able to just have such flexibility in the garden. You know, I took the row covers off on the hot day. I never actually put them back in. My plants are still doing great. And I just, I love that we don't live in a place where it gets like super, super cold. It just allows my plants to have a really good season and something that maybe didn't do so well at the beginning of the season turned out to actually do pretty well at the end of the season, kind of like the collards. I mean, I just really appreciate living in a growing zone like that. You know, some of you guys have really, really short growing zones and you have to be very, very uh, strategic and really think through what you're growing and when you're growing and when you can harvest it. And I kind of have the liberty to just not have to think about that a whole lot. Well, you guys, it is lunchtime and I need my second cup of coffee, but I just kind of want to show you guys around the farm. We haven't just really had a good daily vlog where you guys just come and hung out with me. Um, and so I really appreciate it. I love kind of updating you guys on what's going on. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll talk to you soon.